Hello and welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness. Thank you so much for joining us alongside Mark Miller. As always, I'm Matt Finkel. Week two coming up already. Oh, the football season is going to fly. That's what I've realized. Yeah. But a lot of good in week one. And let's yeah, get started. Yeah, a lot of non-league stuff. Interesting to look at. Yeah, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot going on. And yep. you know what was interesting is we didn't have too many close games. There was yeah, a lot of only blowouts. a handful of close yeah. games. But mm -hmm. the close games were great. And let's mm -hmm. start with Marion Local holding yeah. on and extending that win streak mm -hmm. against a very good Macomb team. Well, that's right, a long win streak, you know, several state championships in a row and everybody expects them to just keep rolling along. They lost a lot of people, they'll be good, they are good, but Macomb is good. And I, I'm not sure a lot of people understand how good Macomb is. They had a chance to win this game, they were right there and it was a battle, but credit Marion Local going on the road, winning that first one with a lot of first time starters. 38 straight wins now mm -hmm. for the Flyers. Anna and Arlington played a great game mm -hmm. that went to overtime. Field mm -hmm. goal, the difference for the De Red Devils. Hey, you know, a new coach and to play your first game is overtime and you win it, that's a lot of poise. That coach really has to be pleased with his guys and they grew up a lot in that game because Anna's a good team, you know, so that was a great victory for Arlington. And then how about Liberty Benton? Mentioned last week that they haven't lost a regular season game since 2012 and mm -hmm. coming, up, coming up on three years since their last regular season loss. They beat Winford. And Winford's good. You know, they run the table during the regular season upon occasion, too. They're a kind of an annual playoff team. We're getting the scores during our game, and we're thinking, uh-oh, Liberty Bank, here goes the streak. They yeah. came back and won at the end, so yeah, that's, that's a good they got that one. victory by yeah. three points. Yeah, good victory. And then Hilltop over Waynesfield Goshen by seven. And Tigers, you know, that's that's a close game for them. Yeah. They're going in the right direction, I think that's safe to say. Yeah, it would have been great if they could have got that one. Yeah. You know, because they have worked real hard to build that roster and to get some confidence, and they just need that win to get them going again. So those were the only four games in our area decided <laughs> by one score. Yeah. So when that happens, and there's a lot of blowout victories, yeah. you have some statement wins. Yeah. So who made yeah. the biggest statement win, in your yeah. opinion? I, well, a bunch, you yeah. know, I think. But uh, I picked out Jefferson Shawnee. You know, Jefferson, 472 yards rushing. Yeah. I mean, that is amazing. Hunter Bickley, Binkley had 191 and, and five touchdowns on his own. So that's a machine. We'll find out this, this week if the machine can keep rolling. But Jefferson's very, very good. I picked out Coldwater Kenton. Not because Coldwater scored 42 points or because they won. I think we'd have all expected that. What I didn't expect is they held Kenton's passing game to 101 yards. I'll bet that hasn't happened in a decade or more. You know, they're used to throwing for 100 yards in a quarter, not in a whole game. And then Jack Hemmelgarn, we knew he had some experience. He was pretty good. One efficient game. 15 out of 18, 191 yards and three touchdowns. That's a pretty good quarterback efficiency rating right there. And then the last game I picked out was Alan East Van Buren. Van Buren coming off that great season, went to the playoffs, beat LCC in the first round, went on to the second round, looking to come back and repeat that thing. And, and uh, uh, Alan East coming off a tough year, stepped up and beat him 41 to 19. I was shocked at that. And then the other thing, two games rolled into one, is Delphus Jefferson and LCC together got beat 87 to 21. Uh, Not Jefferson, St. John's. I'm sorry, St. Yeah. John's. St. John's and LCC, right. thank you. 87 to 21 as they lose to Bath and Elida. So you never have seen that and probably won't see it again. Yeah, a lot this of, year it was. A lot of interesting results. And yeah. we can continue. We got to talk about Ada because Seth Comey yeah. only threw eight for touchdowns. eight <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> That's pretty and, good. You know, he's a sophomore. That's yeah. wild. So. Yeah. He, he, uh, that difference between last year and this year will be huge. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be pretty good. I'm not saying he's going to throw eight every week, but that's, that's a good night. And then Minster over Lormie, the mm -hmm. defending state champs in Division yeah, 6. And, and with Whit Parks back at Lormie, they a lot to play for against Minster, and, and Minster still got them pretty good. So, you know, Josh Nixon, he can throw it. You know, they'll score some points. Absolutely. Yeah. And then don't want to forget about Van Wert because a lot, it's interesting what's happened with Van Wert. They were under the radar. Everyone exposed them to being uh -huh. a team to watch, and then they uh -huh. came out in one week one to do what they had yeah, to do. That's right. And Brian, I don't know what they're like this year, but they typically are pretty pretty competitive. So, you know, to win that one 42-14 is a good night for the Cougars. And finally, uh, another big blowout in Bluffton, taking mm -hmm. down Corey Rawson in a rivalry game. Mitchell Alt threw for over 300 yards, a bunch of touchdowns. Pirates look pretty good. Yeah, Alt's good. And uh, they, as we talked about last week, they lost a lot of close games last year. This could be a turnaround year for them. All right, so a bunch of statement wins to take in, and obviously those teams on the other end of that looking to bounce back in week two. Yep. How about Lima Senior? They played on Saturday, so they had to wait mm -hmm. a little while. They watched everything go down mm -hmm. Friday, and there a lot of excitement surrounding the Spartans. They finally get to open up their yeah. season. They go to Middletown. Yeah. And Chris they get Carter Stadium. Chris Carter Stadium, <laughs> right, on a nice field turf, right? Yeah. And they get the victory, but it was close, and it, the, yeah. the score was close 
throughout much of the game. Is that something you expected? Well, Middletown's a, a proud program, and that's a big rivalry, and they, both teams had a lot to play for. But uh, I think you, you saw a couple of things you expected and maybe a couple that you, you didn't. One thing you expected Lima Senior to do was score points, and they did. Uh, you wondered a little bit, although Coach Fell kept, he was very honest. Jaden Walker's a good running back. Just because he was all league on defense doesn't mean he can't run the football, and he did. 290 yards and three touchdowns. He's a couple good. couple of long scores, yeah. too. They had 696 yards on offense in one game. Yeah. I mean, that is just amazing. But on defense, they gave up 434. And again, Coach Fell saying, we got to plug some holes. We lost some really good players last year, and they gave up some points last year, losing some good players. You'd expect them to give up some points and yards this year. How long can they just keep outscoring people? Maybe the whole year. They're really good on offense. Well, Lima Senior snapped an eight-game losing streak to Middletown. This mm -hmm. game, a renewed rivalry that yep. 2010 possibly was the last, might have been five years, was the last time they played each other in the opener. And, of course, the rivalry dates back to the uh -huh. 1950s. Yeah. So that's encouraging. Yep. But are you concerned or encouraged going forward? Well, again, their schedule is backloaded, you know, and so they can outscore several teams here. But when they start playing the good teams and in that league, the defending state champs, Toledo Central Catholic, lost, you know, so yeah. it's always good to get a, a, a loss on them. But, but uh, yeah, I think they can outscore some people for a while, but I think they'll work on that defense. It'll come around. The first game is, is very difficult for new players. They're just trying to figure out, you know, where to line up, let alone how to make plays. So they'll get better and better, but, man, what a fireworks show. I mean, people in this area, if you don't go watch them play on offense sometime this year, you're crazy. All right. Looking forward to see what yeah. they'll do the rest of the season. And then the other great part about week one is it's a fresh start, right? Mm -hmm. So some teams coming everybody's off. Everybody's undefeated going everybody's in. Everybody's undefeated. <laughs> so some teams coming off losing program or losing records in the year before have a yeah. fresh chance. And yeah. two programs took big yeah. advantage of that in yeah. Defiance and New Bremen, both 0-10 mm -hmm. last year. New Bremen actually 0-10 mm -hmm. the last two years. Yeah. And they both got wins in week one. Yeah, I was able to do the, the Napoleon Defiance game and, and a huge crowd Thursday night, great night. And so was Friday night, great weather, but uh, good for Defiance. They will win some WBL games. They're not bad. Their quarterback is very talented. Uh, they are aggressive on defense. Uh, Jerry Beauty team's not going to stay down for long, you know. Uh, now, they're not overly talented. You know, he's, they got to stay clean and not make a lot of mistakes. But how about New Bremen, man? That's, uh, that is so good for that program. I don't know anything about Bradford. I don't even know where it's from. But I know this. They're 0-1 and New Bremen's 1-0, and and that's pretty huge for, for the Cardinals. Absolutely. Chris Schmidt, first year as the head coach. And when we were there for the warm-up, he was talking about the respect he had for the senior class that stuck with it. And, and they mm -hmm. were rewarded with a victory, and that must have yeah. felt really good for the yeah. entire community. Sure does. Well, it's time now to break down a play, as we often do here on Mark's Madness. And we're going to go to Elida, where you had the call, Elida mm -hmm. versus LCC. Mm -hmm. And the T-Birds got out to a 7 nothing lead in this mm -hmm. game. And yeah, O'Connor with a long run to, right. to start it off with. Yeah. And then Elida rattled off, I think it was 35 straight points. And yeah. this was how it started. So why don't yeah. you take us through these first couple touchdowns for the Bulldogs. All right, we're going to take a look at the quarterback, who's really a tailback, Logan Alexander, big guy. Look at this one. We're going to replay it in slow motion, and nobody's going to touch him. Because of the great blocking, the offensive line for Elida did a great job all night long. Look at the turn back blocking. Kick out the running back on the end man of line of scrimmage. That's a huge block right there. And then look at the receivers working downfield, body on body. Logan makes some good cuts, beats the cornerback into the end zone, and that's a touchdown, one of three for Logan. And like I said, about 25 of 247 yards, he just dominated from the run game. Here you're going to see a pass for a touchdown. This is not textbook, but it works. And the reason it works, he throws it up and lets his guy go get it, throws it deeper than the deeper defender so it's not intercepted. And this is Noah Mosley coming down with it. But again, look at the protection. Cole Harmon is the running back right there. He is a, maybe the best blocking running back I've seen for a while. He really sticks his nose in there. But the touchdown up and over the top, not pretty, but very effective. And that was still a close game at that point. And then Elida went on to get the big victory. Just the start of a great week for the Western Buckeye League, who went 7-3 and three as mm -hmm. a league. And those yeah. three losses came against Versailles, Coldwater, and Delphus Jefferson, three yeah. very good opponents. Three Do you very think good teams. the WBL had the best week out of all the leagues? Well, it, much better than last year for them. I think they went 5-5 five and five in the opener. And then when you don't win that non-league game, because now they play nine straight league games, you really lose out on points for playoffs. you got to win that non-league game. So there's seven teams that, that did that week one. Uh, it's hard to tell right now, is the WBL really good or are they really mediocre? 
You know, but they beat seven non-league teams, so yeah. they're better than those seven at least. It'll be interesting to see. Certainly, we don't have the top two or three like we did last year that might run the table and go undefeated. But you got to look at the Northwest Conference. They went seven and one. Paulding's the only team that lost. You go seven and one. That's a heck of a week. And there's some good teams there, and I think some really good teams for that league, and they're really going to battle it out to see who can win that league championship. But I think several will go on to the playoffs and maybe do well until they meet each other. Right. The Max seven and three, no, yeah, surprise, no surprise there. there that <laughs> they, they always had do a that. winning yeah. record. BBC went four and eight, which I thought yeah. was a little surprising considering mm -hmm. the the uh, year that that league came off of last year. Yeah. NWCC three and five, track four and four, GMC mm -hmm. three and four. So yeah. early tests for these teams, and you, yeah. you can learn a lot when you're not playing yes, you within your own league. Yeah. So yeah, WBL versus the Mac two and one. Mac won it, but. Um, you know, the MAC plays another non-league week this week, whereas the WBL and a lot of these other leagues get right into the league play. So it'll be interesting. It we'll, we'll know more in a couple more weeks. Yeah, that's what we always say here. We yes, just got to watch it all play out. Yeah. And before we turn our attention to week two, we want to go back to mid-July, July the 10th, for an exciting event that was here at Elida, the, the Legends of Northwest Ohio Youth Football Camp. Yeah. And Mark, such, a, such great participation from the area coaches yeah. and the area youth that came out. And we just want to highlight what went on on the 10th for you. Mark, take it away. Well, it was sponsored by FCA and Andy Lynch, our, our guy right here that works with the station, too, did a great job of setting it up. We had, we had excellent community support. Our sponsors, Basement Doctor, Arby's, Cold Stone, Lima Sporting Goods, Pepsi, Buffalo Wild Wings, McDonald's, pitched in and allowed us to do this camp for free. My son Kyle coordinated it, got a hold of the local guys that we're going to show their names here in a minute. The coaches responded in a huge way. 200 kids, third through sixth grade, showed up for a free football camp and they won't know who coached them and, and how good those guys are until later or their dads tell them. Right. But uh, you know, just uh, you know, we had state championship coaches there, we had local coaches, coaches that traveled a little bit, players, pro players, high school players. Uh, we got players that are still playing today that uh, came out and served as huddle leaders. Um, it was just a phenomenal night. Andy Lynch was a speaker and Doug Boquist was our chaplain. Uh, it, it was a fabulous night. We held it at Elida, and uh, it was so good, they decided that night, we got to do it again. Good. So we're going to do we'll another one it, next July. Hope we'll make it an annual event. Yeah. And it's stuff like that that separates this area, in my opinion, from other areas in the country, that community support where everyone comes together and puts a great night on for the young kids yeah. in the area. And then mm -hmm. you see it week one, too. When everyone yeah. comes out to the games, it's so exciting. Yeah. There's an energy in the area. In, in yeah. Wherever you go, I was up north in Finley and Bluffton, but same thing no matter where you went. Yeah. And it really is a, it's great to spotlight that. And we wanted to share that fun. with you. Yep. So lasting impressions from week one? Well, um, a lot of points, Yeah. Um, which is a little surprising because supposedly the defense is ahead of the offense early in the season. Yeah. Um, I thought the cool night may have helped the offense because there wasn't as much cramping wasn't as much fatigue, you know, as a normal August night can be. Right. Um, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Some surprises. Uh, I'm just glad to see those two teams get wins that needed one so badly. Uh, I love to see turnaround programs. You know, the story of Lima Senior last year will last forever around here, you know. So uh, it, it was a good weekend. And uh, as we move forward, we're going to find out who the, who the pretenders are and, and who the contenders are, as they say. And just to tout our area a little bit more, only three teams lost to non-area teams mm -hmm. we consider our viewing area, yeah. which extends about an hour in all directions from yeah. Lima. But be another great year. We're pretty good at football, and that's, yeah. that's yeah, exciting. That makes our job a lot of fun. So now let's go to week two. What games are you looking forward to? Because it, it doesn't let up. We got no, great ones. No, it gets good. Van Wert and St. Mary's. I'm really having my eye on that one because those are both teams on the rebound. We go opener. Yeah, Doug Fry down there at St. Mary's kind of turned it last year, looking to get into the top echelon this year. And you said the sleeper. Everybody says they're the sleeper. Well, now that everybody knows, they're probably not the sleeper anymore. But I think Van Wert, you know, uh, that'll be a good test for them. Uh, I like Jefferson Coldwater just yeah. because Jefferson's going to gain some yards and put and put some points up. Uh, Coldwater. We know cold water, you know. Uh, this will be a really good test for both. I appreciate Jefferson not dodging cold water. I appreciate Macomb not dodging Marion Local. Those teams have tough times scheduling non-league games. Nobody wants to play them. Yeah. Nobody wants to get womped, you know. Well, these guys are going in there saying, let's play with them. So I appreciate that. A lot of other good games. Lipsick Grove is always a great rivalry up there. Uh, you know, there's, there's good ones. The Forts, Fort Recovery, Fort Loramie. That'll be good. Yeah, can years. Fort Loramie re rebound from that opening season thrashing yeah. uh, Fort Recovery? 
They're rolling again after last year's dream season. They're one and zero again. So remember, those two teams played week eleven. Yeah, Recovery rematch of the, the playoffs yeah. last year. So that yeah. adds a little yeah. juice to it. It sure will. does. Sure does. So let's take a look at our rebroadcast schedule for you, and it all begins on Friday at eleven p.m. on WOSN with Van Buren versus Bluffton, and then. 11 p.m. on WTLW, immediately following the sports report, Marion Harding versus Lima Sr. Looking forward to the Spartans' home opener. Saturday, it's a doubleheader for East, starting at 7 p.m., Ada versus Arlington, followed by Lima Central Catholic versus Delphi St. John's. That's an interesting one with both of them coming in 0-1. Yeah, that's huge Don't for want the to women. go to 0-2. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, lots of good games to look forward to. Of course, the sports report will have you covered on Friday night, 10 p.m., WTLW. Thank you very much to Mark Miller. Mm -hmm. I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next week on Mark's Madness.